I feel like I got burnt. I've spent a decent amount of money on this game. But watching the inflation in the game continue to rise is pretty disheartening. After today, and seeing the response to the Dungeon Divers duck up is kind of insane. I may be, I'm just here, I'm reading exactly the way, I may be, I'm just here to rant, but I'm ready, I'm about ready to pull out of this game. If they continue to respond to their own quack ups in an unprofessional way. If anything, I feel like making it more time friendly and less expensive to play would increase the return of old players and new players. I wonder what they discuss during their business meetings. Guys, welcome to another one. Reacting to, uh, you know, what the people on Reddit are talking about. This is the entire style of mobile and gacha games. I'd suggest go free to play. I've been playing for five years and still enjoy it. Also, I haven't spent any money on it. Very nice. Five years free to play in a game as um, attempting as Raid? That's pretty good. Not a single single uh, penny spent. That's pretty damn good. Any Anybody else out there like that? Five years plus, maybe? Actually, you can't go higher than five. You can go towards six. I've been playing since uh, the full Fusion back in July of 2019 myself. Um, but yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't. I don't think I could... There's no way me, knowing the way that I am, could have gone free to play and stayed free to play um, the entire duration. But that's curious. People don't get that expectations are everything. If you just expect to progress slowly and be entertained and get some cool new champs every now and then, then you'll be happy. If you expect to be able to keep up with the top 100 accounts without spending anything, you're going to have a bad time. And he's not wrong, right? Set the bar low, so set your expectations low, and you're going to enjoy not just the game, but just life in general, bro. Did. If you just, like, not expect things, then, like, things will just, you know, do things. Guys, if, if you don't expect, you know, big things to happen, you're not going to be disappointed when they don't happen. But if you expect great things and you put the bar all the way up there and you are constantly disappointed you're kind of just doing it here you're setting yourself to fail temper your expectations i'm not saying completely you know deprive yourself of hope and and whatnot and entertainment and, you know if that's your thing go ahead but also keep an keep an eye on realism if that's the word that's appropriate, the most apt description. Maybe I'm trying to say be pragmatic. Understand, you know, hope hope for the best, prepare for the worst. That's something that we were always told in the military, right? Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. That way we can keep things objective. And that's what this is. Yeah, I kind of see it as, what am I paying for exactly? If I put enough money in, can I get solutions to all of the content so that I can stop playing, I guess? Yeah, is that what you guys really want? I guess that's why, that, that's actually a good discussion. That's a good topic point, right? What's the point? What do we want? What's the goal here? If you put enough money in, if you put enough time in, can you get all the solutions to all of the content? And if you do, for what? So you can stop playing the game, so you can beat the game? That is why, that is precisely why Polarium really capitalizes and forces us to do PvP, right? There is a psychology behind PvPers. It can be addicting. The rush that you get from competing, being competitive is dangerous, especially if you're a man, because men are innately competitive. Men innately want to be the alpha in whatever form or fashion right some just want to be the best just to be the best how do they do that by contesting with others and if you're the best if you're at the top guess what you have people coming for your crown just because you are the best just because you're number one it incites challenge 
Polarium knows this. Polarium thrives on this. Polarium hopes that you're one of those people. So that even if you do continue to spend and get solutions, it's never ending. That is the secret sauce behind that. Playing free to play, I have just over the years conquered the challenges using what I had in my roster, which is completely, you know, doable. You can do that. I don't know if you can just use one starter. Cha- you guys know what I mean, right? I'm not sure if you can completely beat the game with just free to play champions, just from what you get from the shards that you have to pull. Like, I don't know if that's a pop. Like, can you do that? Can you do it with just commons and, and the rares that you get sometimes from green shards and then the free to play champions? I don't know if that's possible. That's a good question. That's a good challenge. Somebody should do that. It's not going to be me. But this is pretty cool. And that makes it quite a bit more fun to me. Yeah, the self-imposed challenges are pretty fun. And Polarium doesn't want people like you. Let's be real. Polarium doesn't want people like you. Polarium wants... Well, let me backtrack a little bit. Polarium prefers and highly encourages the behaviors of those that are going to pump more money into their wallets. That's that's the nature of the beast. That's the business. Nothing wrong with that in and of itself. There's nothing morally wrong with that because the company is performing in the function that it was designed to operate in, right? No surprise there. Playing, uh, what's it? Though right now I am very hard stuck on S8 of Hard Curse City and it's tough, that's true. No Al score and no Mythic makes that stage incredibly difficult. I'm not even at S8, I don't even know what that is, but I'm assuming you, you know, it's gonna be hard. I wish I had an award to give. What exactly are you rushing towards? Being able to do 5 billion on Hydra? Cool. Then what? Then it resets next week and you can try and do it again. It's PvP. Case in point, Hydra Clash. Exhibit A, right? If you're not considering Plat, I mean Plat, Plat Arena was there first, right? So there's that, but but then they came out with Hydra Clash. Hydra used to be PvE. You get your top chest, and that was good enough for me. But now, you got to compete with other clans. Oh, before Hydra Clash, wasn't there CVC? Yeah, there was CVC, and now the top clans are are doing, you know, doing the most there. For what? Because they really need, I don't know, whatever, a, a Void Shard from their personal rewards? You know what I mean? There's way more satisfaction out of creating your own team that 100%'s a hard dungeon than just spending for the champs that the Hell Hades, uh, Hell Hades optimizer tells you other people use. Yeah. Every one of my hard dungeon teams is 100% homegrown, like a true American, with almost all epics. Very nice. Exactly. I'm known in my clan as the guy who six stars weird epics. I actually like seeing guys like that. I like seeing players who do that, who's like six star Kaidens or like six stars, I don't know, a, a spider to use them for quick debuffs for AoE decreased defense. And, and we, or what is it, singular or AoE? I forget. But the point is, that's cool. Being able to use epics and rares to do the jobs that I have mostly legendaries for, that is huge. You deserve a clap or two for me or somebody who has a better standing than I do. I'm drinking coffee, as always. Taking it at your own pace and doing whatever the fuck you want is way more fun than trying to compete with the people that in all likelihood are spending more money than you'd ever consider. True. People have more fun with the champs they like than playing with a full team of mythicals that cost them $10,000 to compete in arena. Well, I don't know that. Do we know that for sure? Have we met somebody? and talk to them and had a face-to-face conversation. I'm being nitpicky here, right? I'm just being a dick at this point. But, I mean, there's some truth to what I'm saying. We don't know what's fun to certain people. That's subjective. Cold Heart is still my favorite champion in the game, and I use her in my hard Fire Knight 6 team at 100%. Very good. It's a very good team. I don't understand the mentality 
behind it all. It's not a skill-based game, especially when people are using the optimizer. Hey, 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 you're talking too loud. And all that nonsense just to auto-build them the best champions. So what are people trying to prove by being top 100, or at least competing at that level? I don't know if it's something to prove to other people. I mean, the, when I look at the analytics for people who watch me, most of you guys are around my age, so 30s and above. I'd like to think that you guys are adults, that most of you guys are mature. I'd like to think, but also I was in the military. So I met a lot of people who were like 30, 30s, mid 30s, acting like they were children. So forgive my ambivalence. I digress. I would like to think that there's a level of maturity here with the people who watch me or play Raid that don't really care about proving it to other people. So um, when people say like, oh, what are you doing? You're trying to prove something? I don't necessarily agree with that because um, one, for an example, me, who am I for you to try to prove anything to? I'm not special to you, but let's be real here. You don't care about me or my opinions. You shouldn't if you do. In the same, in the same sense here, I don't have anything to prove to anybody here, which is also why I'm probably not like the, the family friendliest CC that you're ever going to come across. I pretty much say whatever I want whenever I feel like saying it. A lot of the times it's inappropriate. A lot of the times you're not going to like hearing what I have to say. Or if you're in my comments acting a fucking fool, I'm going to call you out on it. And if you're being a dick, I'm going to respond to you in kind. I'm not going to be like, you know, some other CCs, nothing wrong with it, that are, you know, going to be nice and use nice words and whatever the fuck. Like, no, because that's not who I am. I'm not a nice person in real life. I'm decent because I don't think it's hard to be decent. I don't go out of my way to try and be a dick to make a point. Oh, look at me. I'm real because I'm a dick. No, I don't do that. I'm just you know, being exactly the way that I am. Okay, you know, I'm, I'm going on this rant a little bit here, but I'm just explaining to you guys. If you're new here or if you don't get the point already or if you don't understand, I'm not a nice person. I'm not saying that to like you know, shun you guys away or prove something. I'm just letting you guys know. That's just how it is, all right? And if you fuck with it, cool. But if you don't, that's fine. I'm here for the people that want to be here. You're here still watching me because some part of you resonates with this side of me. And that's cool, and I like that. I respect that. I appreciate that. Back to this. I just don't get it. I play competitive FPS games. Winning there is a combination of a lot of skill, planning, reading the game, mechanical skill, so I can get wanting to get good there. He can get it. That makes sense, yeah. Anyone spending real money on raid is absolutely nuts in my opinion. It's a valid opinion. Again, blanket statement. I don't necessarily agree with it, but I understand where he's coming from. I get spending a few quid here and there, but the ones spending a thousand? Oh, okay, so he's saying like, okay, a little bit of money, a little bit, a few quids here is okay. But if you're spending thousands, then he's got a problem with it. I don't necessarily think uh, I completely agree with him, but again, I get it. I've played free-to-play since my account started, and I'd consider myself late to endgame. It's only really, well, I mean, you can't really consider yourself self-proclaim yourself a certain area of the game if you're not there right you can't call yourself late game if you're not speed running or sorry you can't call yourself end game if you're not doing all the hard 10 dungeons in a fast time all right well what's a fast time um i don't know like i do dragon 10 hard in like 48 38 seconds i do uh spider 10 in what i don't know uh 10 seconds something like that Oh, sorry, 17 seconds, five turns? Like, it, it becomes more about turns after a certain point. I mean, time is important, right? Um, Sand Devil 25. Like, 13 seconds on one account, 15 seconds on another account. Phantom Shogun 20. Like, you guys get the point, right? So you can't just call yourself late or end game. One, you're going you're gonna to have to pick one. You're either late game or you're end game, or maybe you're entering end game, and I guess that's where the middle point is. I'm being fucking picky as shit here. 
it's only really a few stages in Soul Cross that I have trouble with when it comes to Centranos and every other bit of content is done. By the way, if you guys haven't noticed, I'm going to start trying, or I've been trying to become a better speaker. I realized when I first started doing raid, when I started doing YouTube in general, what I would do is I would say like, uh, uh, like, you know, I would use a lot of filler sounds, a lot of filler words. I'm trying to do better because I, I was watching Cole Red. You guys watch Cole Red? Cole Red is an amazing speaker. He does so well when it, like, he is just fluid. He is clear. He is concise with his words. And I noticed that one of the things that he does is that he really takes the time to think about what he's going to say before he says it. He doesn't use ums or likes or anything like that. Granted, he is a teacher, so he has that background. He's got the years of experience. But still, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean I can't practice myself. That doesn't mean I can't learn something from it. So if you notice that I'm pausing a little bit more often than you're normally used to, maybe it's a little weird. I'm trying to become better. I agree to a point. I played on and off for about four to five. I I'm talking about myself a lot here, aren't I? Let's, let's just finish this, okay? While I can agree about expectations, the XP availability and level grinding to rank up is a bit excessively tedious. Wish they'd give more options for earning than having to buy the XP boost. True, I greatly enjoy the game personally as free to play. I think that's part of the appeal and the payoff though. If it was easy to rank up champions to 60 with full masteries and booked out with sick gear, booked out, Oh, with sick gear, those are two separates. You'd be sitting around waiting for the next champion. True, that's what I do. Even getting one guaranteed fusion a month, plus maybe one other champ from rolling, there's barely enough resources to get them maxed out before you get your next champs. It keeps progression about constant. Also doing a little extra challenge like voids only. Isn't there a YouTuber who does voids only? A raid content creator who does voids only? I thought there was. You won't have the pressure of being crazy because you are restricted. Stop spending. Evaluate everything based on what it would actually do for you. Why care about a champion, even a great one, if you aren't going to use it in your rotation? I've got 12 or so Legos. Use maybe 8 of them. 3 of those will be replaced by rares if I ever get the rares. That's true. The only main reason I spend money is because I enjoy the game. I started relatively recently in the grand scheme of things, and I don't mind supporting games I enjoy. Yes, but be careful with that frame of thinking, because that can go sideways very quickly. That being said, I am beginning to understand what the fuck <laughs> Polarium... Oh, I'm... The fuck Malarium Pinta... Oh, okay, that makes more sense. I'm beginning to understand the fuck Polarium mentality. I get it. This is a nice gotcha game. It's not about fucking Polarium. <laughs> it's more about not wasting money. I spend nothing now, but if you do, the monthly gems is good and energy is never a waste if you apply it correctly. What do you guys use gems on? I use mine on energy for the most part. And then I don't like farming Minotaur. I, don't, I just don't want to spend the time. So I buy the masteries not the best way to do it i think you could save i think ty did did the uh, math i think you save about 300 gems by um just throwing them in minotaur in five years and after close to two billion dollars in revenue since the game was made the game doesn't even have enough engaging content to put all our champions to use the game intentionally drops content incredibly slow to milk every last penny from the player base. A game that makes you spend money to have fun is not a game that wants you to do other no-spendy activities to replace said fun. The only error they made is they stepped a bit too far into an already fucking distant red line. Fuck Polarium. Not a marathon, milking competition, and we're the cows shit 
Yeah. Seems like he dives into a pretty deep discussion here. But you guys get the point. I think you guys get the point here, right? You can get burnt out. Be careful with your spending. 